Okay, do I do this? No, never look at the camera. Okay. It's so fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Hannah, Hannah Beuger, if you pronounce it the Dutch way. I work mostly in level design and I also do some writing, but mostly I make trees and rocks look nice together. Yay! I am, I'm currently the only level designer in the company, but we used to be with two. Uh, Gustav, who left recently, I learned a lot from him and now I'm taking over, so that's very exciting and also very frightening. Now I'm suddenly in charge of both the world and the story. Cool. I'm good. Totally fine. <laughs> you got this. Just getting your screwed. I pretty much started with level design when I started studying game design at school. And I had no idea what it was at first. Uh, and then I immediately discovered I liked making digital worlds, I guess. Also making them pretty, which was a problem at first because I didn't make them functional. But I got there eventually. And you know, I've always been walking around with worlds in my head and now I just actually make them, which is pretty cool. As a level designer, do you place enemy spawns? Nope. Resource nodes? Nope. Lizard doggos? Mm-mm. So why do we pay you? My looks. Obviously. That's why we don't pay you anything. <laughs> <laughs> I the lowest salary out of anybody here. <laughs> so level design can be many things, but specifically what I do here is maybe better explained as world design or world building. I like to sort of build more in, in, in layers. So I first do, okay, what kind of landscape are we looking at? Like, are we having a lot of mountainous area? Is it more flatlands? Is there a lot of water? So erosion, rivers, etc. So I go for the big stuff like cliffs and, and water and landscaping. And then I figure out what kind of landscape material we need. So then I do another pass of painting. And that usually also introduces more detail in the landscaping that I do. And so I just go over an area layer by layer by layer. And then eventually that last layer is added and Hopefully it works. How does it feel when you get feedback from the community about level bugs? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was just like, oh, God damn it, we missed the spot again. <laughs> Mostly that. The world's huge and, you know, we're not, we're not machines, so we miss spots all the time. And if it's an area that we're going to rebuild anyway, then I'm like, we'll do it later. <laughs> Trying to make a world stay interesting while we have a very limited set of assets and also it's because it's so big and we're hand making everything, it's very easy to lose oversight and to lose sight of what's good. Sometimes I'm just placing the same cliffs for a week or the same trees for a week or going over an area 50 times just to purge and rebuild and purge and rebuild. When you're placing your 2000th rock, does it look good? You don't know anymore. You have no clue. It's it's hard sometimes to keep focus. The map uh, is divided in tiles, which allows us to edit these tiles separately. That way the landscape is split so we can work uh, one person per tile, essentially. And then we have some levels that are essentially invisible and they go over it like, uh, like a la another layer that usually contain the gameplay stuff. We can work on tiles while at the same time uh, gameplay can be added on top of that in another level. So here you can see the exploration level is loaded uh, and there's a slug and a creature spawn point in it and they will disappear if I unload the level. And when I load it back in, they will reappear again. There you go. Gameplay level design and more aesthetic level design, I guess that's how you could separate it, is that we, we, we look at the purpose of an area. Uh, is this meant to be uh, early game, uh, a large building area, does it need to have a lot of open spaces? We take that into account. Is it more an end game area? Does it need more obstacles? Is it more difficult? Then we tend to make it difficult to navigate, to traverse, etc. So we can we can start with the, the big stuff like that. We just start building and then occasionally have an idea of like, oh, this would be like a cool kind of arena type thing for, for enemies or whatever. We make stuff and then the gameplay level designers have to sort of like try to try to make it work. <laughs> I don't think any area in the game is done right now. Um, specifically right now, we're really taking a look at, okay, what do we need for it to be done? Uh, and there's quite a lot of, of, of plans still. Drawing that line of when is it done is so difficult. Uh, and you really have to sort of just really look at like, what is the experience we're planning to give? What is the style we have and stick to that? 
as much as we can. We're not building the most hyper-realistic world simulator here, so we can get away with some things. We're building a certain experience, and that's always something I have to keep in mind, like, you know, don't go too far. So what software do you use? I use Unreal Engine, uh, and I use Photoshop, and I use Paint. <laughs> Don't. Okay. I don't use Paint. <laughs> but what do you use Photoshop for? This thing called Pigment Map, where we can paint this uh, this canvas essentially, which we then project over the level, which can edit colors of assets. So basically, we can make sure that they're you know we just have the one green grass asset, and then if we lay over the Pigment Map, we can actually make you know grass look more yellowish and dry in certain spots without actually having to make a new asset. So it's a lot cheaper. To do that. Why do you and Jace wear the same clothes? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you do anything else other than level design and writing? Uh, I did some VFX at some point, but that's about it. I also annoy Jace a lot. Help Jace with programming? No, I don't. So, uh, this is a formal apology <laughs> to all players. <laughs> that are played in areas of the map that we've been working on because, you know, we add new cliffs sometimes and we add new trees sometimes and sometimes we forget to enable collision or disable collision and then they just pop up in their game and blocks everything. So that's totally our fault. It's not just me. I to I'm totally blaming the art team too. <laughs> Just throwing them under the bus. We try to minimize like damage to player bases as much as possible, of course. Like we don't want to ruin people's games because people are making super awesome shit and we don't want to actually ruin that, especially not with indestructible meshes. Uh, uh, adding that to the level is, you know, kind of a douchebag move, so we try not to do it. But sometimes an area is so unfinished or so broken and people have built into it, we just can't not do it. Is Coffee Stain your first job in the gaming industry? Coffee Stain is definitely my first job in the industry. It's not my first. I, I interned at Ubisoft before, uh, but it's 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 you know it's way really, way different to actually work somewhere. So this is my first job, and I feel like I'm getting real biased. <laughs> I don't want to leave anymore, man. But now, yeah, I feel like everything after this is just downhill. Goodbye, and thank you for watching this week's episode of Gay or Nay. Who's your favorite person in the office? Myself. Uh, is that more flannel back there? Yes. Yeah. Flannel stain studios. <laughs> oh my god. All right, Swedish pizza is dog shit. Yeah. Here's a bag of money. <laughs> thanks. That. Thanks. Yes. I'll take that. Um, that's all the things. Cool.